Okay, this is the new uh, commercial strawberry garden system. Just finished up the prototype. It's under a thousand watt light and it's roughly four by eight long. This one's actually about four by seven and a half and it could go four by eight and a half without any problem with the light mover that the uh, lights on the track. Um, the way I have it set up in here, there's a sump pump that basically has a filter bag around to, pre to prevent uh, particles from going in and clogging up the uh, spray lines that are on top of each one of these. We'll pull it out for a moment and you can kind of see it spraying. So basically what happens is the sump pump pumps water. There's closed off valves here and here. This is actually a waste drain that hooks up to a garden hose so you can flush it um, and change the system quickly. And of course there's your, uh, your off valve there. So this valve is open, goes up, tees off, spreads down each line. On each one there's a uh, quarter inch um, soft tubing line that goes to a, uh, a tapped in um, basically line tee. Um, and then in each one of these there's a three quarter inch elbow that's uh, sealed in with hot glue and silicone and inside we have uh, strawberry plants. Now you can see the difference. These are the strawberry plants that were put in four or five days ago. You can see they're already coming out and looking really good considering. So we have uh, poles of those that first that went in again a couple days ago. And then as we come over you can see these are the ones that were put in uh, you know just the other day where there's still basically a bare root sometimes with a little bit of uh, of green on them and often the uh, little shoots that come up are white and that's because the shoots are um, not fully developed yet they haven't been exposed to sun so uh, right here we have about a little over 700 plants under 4x8 uh, area under the thousand watt light and the goal is to see uh, you know what kind of yield we can get per plant um, the idea with the vertical garden again is sprayers go on top spray down the plant roots trickle down and go through a recirculating system back up to the pump. Um, rather than doing flat um, uh, flat channels f with the uh, with the draining tube, we tried to go vertical with the strawberry. So literally down each uh, <clears throat> down each pipe, it'll be a solid row of plant matter. Okay, so that's uh, the game plan, and hopefully it it'll basically just be a wall of strawberries. Of course, there's no weeding. There's no um, need for pesticides if we have it in a controlled environment like a, a greenhouse where we can use all natural stuff. We could use an organic fertilizer even though it's not quite as efficient. Um, again, we don't have to worry about irrigation. We don't have to worry about excess humidity issues since each one of these uh, is sealed here so there's no water dripping on the outside. It's all internal and just washing the roots. Um, and other than that, it should be a pretty self-sustaining, easy system. Again, no weeds, no pesticides. Um, no herbicides, nothing. It's basically just fresh grown hydroponic strawberries. So we'll see how this uh, prototype pans out. Um, you know, right now we'll, uh, we're just kind of in the experiment phase to see what happens. Um, thanks for watching. Okay, here we are at about 75 days in on the uh, strawberry commercial prototype. Um, you can see that we still have a bit of an issue with some of the water um, draining. Uh, we still have some issues with some of the seals. Um, you can see that the plants have grown tremendously um, in the past little period of time. Um, we have strawberries forming all over the place at all different stages. We've got uh, red ones, white ones. You can see that each leaf um, on the majority of the plants are about as big as a human hand, so they're very large. Uh, we did have a uh, gnat issue, a fungus gnat issue, which we took care of with uh, a special uh, gnat control. Um, you can see, again, more strawberries just about everywhere for the uh, majority of the plants in the upper portions of it, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, the other thing uh, that we have going on too is there's runners off of virtually every plant. Again, one of the things that we found is that we really need to work with a variety that throws less runners. That's become uh, a major problem in terms of maintenance, the need for constantly cutting runners. Um, now what's happening is you can see some of the plants are, are beautiful and lush. Uh, towards the top of the system and as we get down towards the bottom they thin out and they're much wispier and smaller down below. Uh, the reason being of course um, the 1000 watt HPS light is across the top moving on a, a light track back and forth 
and there isn't the penetrating power. Um, as we get down through uh, the main canopy, the plants are um, basically covering up all the light, so nothing's getting to the bottom. So we're basically getting a reverse pyramid effect where uh, the plants are shrinking down as we get down the pole. Now we do have a plan for uh, reducing that issue, which we're going to uh, talk about later on down the road. But for now, we're going to cover some of the, the main things that are going on with the system. Um, we can see that still the plants that we uh, put in initially are doing much better. Uh, the ones that we put in as bare root, uh, and we planted within a day or two, um, on those poles are doing extremely well, again, in the upper two, three feet of the system. On the uh, poles that we put in later on down the road, uh, as far as the transplants, where they were transplanted as late as two weeks after we received them, um, they were much wispier and nowhere near as dense. Again, that's mainly because we transplanted them late. Um, there really hasn't been uh, many issues overall, though. Um, everything's going extremely well. Um, there is a little bit of scorching through the middle. What you can see up here, some of the plants are growing very tall on the top, just as they are up the poles. And the problem is that the ones down the main chute of where the light's moving back and forth, they're actually scorching a little bit um, when they reach uh, you know, certain heights because that light is too hot for these plants. Again, that's something that we're going to do uh, a workaround on and uh, hopefully improve. Now here's a quick shot of the top of the plants just so you can see what they look like going down. You can see just how thick that canopy's really become from top to bottom. And um, when we pop one of the tops here, you can be able to see the roots. We actually have the sprayers on right now. But you can see, you know, hopefully get some light in here. You can see just how thick and white those roots are. It's become basically a solid root mass down the whole length of the tube. I'm going to close this off so I don't get a spraying mess on my face. As far as the strawberry flowers, they've been mostly self-pollinating. We haven't used bumblebees or any type of artificial pollination um, whatsoever. Uh, you know, from time to time, we'll take them by hand and shake them a little bit. Um, but that's all it seems to take to uh, get real good pollination and, um, you know, get good uh, strawberry production out of these as well. So that's been uh, very easy and low maintenance. Um, what we found is the strawberries from this particular variety, which is Seascape, um, are extremely sugary and very sweet. Um, they have about three to five times the sugar content of what you would find at your typical store. And uh, they are a very delicious variety, so that's going very well. Um, what we will have to test down the road is the viability of the uh, berries themselves as far as the skin wall and thickness when they're fully ripe and to make sure that they ship properly and that we don't have any damage um, because that's one of the risks when you deal with a high sugar variety is that they do not tend to do too well down the road in, in terms of shipping and they tend to rot quicker. So you have to get them to market pretty fast. Um, again, that's why in the winter you normally get very disgusting varieties of uh, strawberries at your local grocery store because even though they look big and red and, and pretty, they're actually a very low sugar variety with very tough skin that you can just about bounce off a wall. Um, what that means is they look pretty and they tend to sell well, but they taste absolutely terrible. So we're going to, uh, you know, down the road try to produce a, a very large facility that's, um, you know, going to produce uh, high quality, high sugar berries in the actual United States uh, on the East Coast.